If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So we're looking at this race and uh, we want a bit of make an assessment on what's happening <coughs> within this race. And just one glance at the ladder will tell you lots of information. So you can see the traded range on each of these runners and you can see the position of where horses are within that traded range. So we can see the front three are here, well no the front two are sort of mid-range so they could have been absolutely anywhere um, and you're going to have to wait for a trend to develop there. So you can see there's a bit of backing going on on the favourite. My eyes drawn to the fourth favourite, Atomic Jack, because that price is at the bottom of its range so it's probably been coming in for a little bit of time. There you go, you can see Atomic Jack has been coming in for some time. So if that backing is going to continue, even if it's sort of shallow, it's probably going to send the price of something else out. And if we can tell, the favourite's the shortest price naturally, so if there's a little bit of backing on the favourite, then maybe it'll send the price out on something else. So my eyes draw onto here, simply because we're near a crossover point. So if I pop some money in around that particular point within the market, what we'll do is um, see if we can get matched on that. And the reason for popping it near a crossover point is that if the price goes against us in this direction, um, then it's gonna, we're going to take less of a loss, and if it goes up, then we'll be fine. So I'm keeping my eye on the money at 4.2 because there doesn't seem much left there. So I'm just going to take that out anyway. We'll establish the position there. But from this particular point onwards, we need to see if there are justification for holding this position on this particular runner. So we can see um, that fourth favourite the price is near the bottom of its range but it's not really coming in that much more. We're seeing a bit of a drift on the third favourite and we're seeing the um, favourite coming in a little bit so really that's helpful, that's helpful, that's not particularly helpful. But as I've shown in our previous videos what you should do is establish um, closing positions as soon as you've established an opening position and that will allow you um, to make sure that you know you know what you're doing basically. So once uh, you can see we're just getting matched here at four again we've just been matched at four there's no point in putting a closing position at 4.1 because there's no potential profit there but there is worth putting closing positions above that particular value so again we return to our assessment of is the market helping us achieve uh, what we want from this particular position so you can see the um, fourth favorite has started to come off of that bottom end of the range and to, to be frank that's quite normal you, you, you wouldn't expect the price to go on forever but when you see something being backed in you're looking for an indication that it's going to continue to be backed um, so that's why we were looking at that you can see this is at the top end of its range but there is money for the favorite so because the favorites a third of the market that will put pressure on the second favorite we have 180 pounds worth of unmatched bets but we have a net stake of 300 so we need to put a few more of those in we need to get that 180 to match um, the 300, there you go. So those are all of our potential closing positions in the market. At any point we can cancel those. So if we think this trade is going particularly well then maybe we'll cancel or move some of those around. But typically I would expect the price on this to inch up very very slowly unless if we see a significant move on the favourite. Um, and maybe we'll see you know a little bit more money coming in for something else. But the second favourite and uh, sorry the third favourite and the favourite are basically uh, being backed to differing extents so that is helping put a little bit of pressure on the price uh, to go up from there. If we feel nervous at any point what we can do is put a, a closing trade there and then just cancel the one above it because we've got them stacked up from there. But when you establish a position like this what you're doing is you're just sitting and waiting um, to get those positions filled. We are still some time out, about seven minutes out, but you're also looking across the market and spending your time confirming if you think you've made the right decision from here. So we really wouldn't want it to go below four um, and if it did go below four we would sort of be looking and framing and saying well you know if it goes down to about 3.7 
then we've got a potential loss of 30. So our upside position, really, we want to be in around that sort of ballpark as well. And we're trying to make a judgment that our call is slightly better than random. That's that's the way you're looking at this particular trade. But we can see a bit of backing support here. It's interacting with the favorite. And when I say interacting, backing support, pulling the price in here is sending the favorite out. So it feels like on this particular runner, um, any price movement that we're going to get here is going to be the aggregate of the favorite and the third favorite. Um, but we'll also look for a bit of support from the fourth. And you can see I'm pretty much ignoring um, the horse on the right hand side here because it's almost an irrelevance in terms of our overall position. So you can see the favorite popped out a little bit there. Um, that brought the price of R1 back in again, but you can see I didn't panic um, at that particular moment. We must be somewhere near the front of the queue here. But because the favorite's weakening, again, maybe you just want to, you know, pull one of these orders down. It depends how nervous you are, how confident you are in your decision making. Because if you're not confident that you've got this right, then there's no reason why you can't put another 60 pound order here and cancel the one above it and just thin that position out. It depends how good you think you are at reading the market. But generally, I would recommend that you don't panic and dump orders in and out of the market because that would just drive you mad. And the market tends to jiggle around quite a bit there anyway. We're seeing a little bit of weakness on the favorite now. So that's not supporting our position. So I think it's more likely now that you'd want to move your position a little bit closer uh, to the front of where the activity is within the market. So we're just we're not saying that we're going to dump our position. We're just saying that we're not as confident as we were before. Um, that all of our positions will get matched and you can see there's been very little activity outside of 4 and 4.1 so we really need to see the favorite sort of coming back in again really um, to help uh, close our position we've still got about five minutes left in this market uh, for that to occur so with the favorite drifting um, I would expect we'll have a look at the chart because I, I, I know what I would expect in this market and um, you know we should be able to give you a clue by looking at the chart so it's traded at lower values, it's traded at higher values, but I suspect that as it goes towards these higher values, it will start attracting backing support, which will pull it back in again. And you've got to bear in mind that we are about four minutes from the start. Um, so anybody that wants to back the favorite will probably be joining the market in a minute. And that will probably just help pull the price back in the other direction. And if the price on the favorite gets pulled back in the other direction, that should allow us to get filled on these orders from there. So where we've had an order in the market before, say, you know, we sacrificed one of these orders to get out at a slightly lower price, there's no reason why you couldn't cancel one of these and then place it at a higher level so that if the price does begin to run up, then that gives you the ability to um, benefit from, the, you know, the order that you pulled down, which you can see has just happened there. But um, because I'm narrating this, I'm I'm slow. I'm, I'm dreadfully slow. Uh, it's painful to um, have to trade like this. But what you would typically do is when you see things start to confirm what you wish to see, you would cancel a few of those orders and then place them slightly further up. Not too far up that they don't get filled, but you would basically sort of say, well, I think it's going to sort of reach five. Because if we look at the chart on here, you can see that um, it's traded at fives before, so it's not unfeasible that it will touch there. But will it go beyond there? Probably not. So you'd probably stack and split up your orders on the way to five, um, and it would be you know great if you could get a, an order that would um, see you out um, above that level. But you know we've we've done all right here. We've read the market reasonably well. I'm just putting the the closing trade in here to hedge. If you wonder what I'm doing, you can hedge by clicking up here, but I'm just trying to get an extra 31p out of this trade to make it around 15. Um, sorry if that's confused you, but clicking here will hedge your position. But you can see I hedged it on the ladder just so that I'd get a nice round total for you to look at. Um, but yeah, you, you can see how the trade was sort of deliberately done. It looks like it's going to probably touch fives anyway. I'll be interested to see if it goes beyond it. Oh, it has. Um, but you can see we made a call here by looking at all of the different runners within the market, roughly what they were doing and, and what we thought it was and wasn't influencing. And in fact, it's bounced again at around five. So we were right on that assumption. Um, but we, you know, depending upon how aggressive um, or how passive you want to be um, and whether you're confident or not confident you're reading in the market, you can move those orders around and put them in decent positions uh, to be able to get your trade through. But yeah, hopefully that's illustrated to you sort of quite a straightforward trade in, in what is a bit of a nothing market. There's only about £300,000 traded in here. Um, but uh, we've we've managed to do a half decent trade on here. And can you see 
a, a chunk of money came back in again here. So we were absolutely right on our assumption on the second favourite here as well. Some of that's down to experience, but hopefully by watching this video you would have been able to see um, how I constructed this trade, how I entered, how I exited, um, and how you could have influenced the way that you would have traded this market as well. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that video.